To say the defense has mopped the floor with the state's case is an understatement. And I'm bad like the Barbie. I'm a dog, but I still want to party. Being felt like I'm ready to bend. I'm a 10, so I pull in a 10. Like, Debbie. and welcome to my channel if you're new here my name is no guys in dombella also known as quasi there on all social media platforms do subscribe be a part of this family and if you are returning sabi welcome back darling now guys we are back in court in the sense of may you were trial and to say the court is on fire to say the defense has mopped the floor with the state's case is an understatement so without wasting too much of your time let us get into the proceedings for the week before we get into that guys please do like this video do share so that it reaches a greater audience and also do super thanks if you can on the button down below so as we all know we wrapped up with the case uh, still with pinky by telling him on the stand uh, before the three-week recess that we have just returned from and um with the return of the court proceedings we were expecting Pinky by Thillingham to continue with her evidence but we were really at the tail end of her evidence so on Monday the 22nd of July indeed the state did conclude with um, leading Pinky's um, evidence with regards to the cell phone data. On Monday Mgome Zulu the defense counsel for accused number one then took on to the cross-examination. Now, from the get-go, Mgome Zolo um, lets Pinky read a statement, which is by a Captain Mtetwa, who was um, the person who had requested the Section 205 to Vodacom. And in the statement, we now find out that the eight numbers that were requested Section 205 for included the people that were in the house. So two of the numbers for Kelly Kumalo, one for... Um, Senzo Meiwa, one for Longwe Twala, one for um, Dumelo Majala, the other for... Um, Ma Makumalo, which is Kelly's mom, the other for Zandi Kumalo, and um, also included in that was um, a section 205 that was requested for Omandi Samkizi, who was Senzo's, Senzo Meiwa's wife at the time. Now, the first bomb that was dropped by Umgome Zulu is the fact that he let Pinky know that um, in the court there has been a confession that says that a call was made to accused number three allegedly um, by Kelly Kumalo on the day of the incident. So, um, um, Mgome Zulu wants to go into basically the cell phone records of Kelly Kumalo to see if there was such a call that was made from Kelly Kumalo's number to the number that is associated with accused number three. And when the judge interjects in this, um, he then points out that no, but Mukhola had already told the court that the confession was incorrect or parts of the confessions were incorrect. And the judge was referring to the confession that was made by accused number one. However, Mgome Zulu in this point or at this point in time was actually referring to the confession that was made by Undanzi. Um, remember taking us back just a little bit the confession made by Umuzi Spia was said to be incorrect because Muzi had said that the incident firstly happened on a Saturday and secondly he had said that he was there with Makimbi and Marco Butelezi which um, Sergeant Mohola later found that these people were either in jail or shot dead by the police by the time the incident happened. So it was not possible for those people to be involved in the case. So basically his confession was said to be incorrect. Now Ndanzi's confession had said that um, he was with accused number three and five and he received a call or accused number three received a call from Kili Kumalo asking them where they are in order for them to go and do the hits. So now the cell phone records Mgomezulu wanted to go into are not reflecting any call. And the state then says, no, now you're putting it as a fact that um, accused um, number three was contacted by Kelly Kumalo and um, Ngome Zulu then says no 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 we're not putting it as a fact but we're trying to show just how untrue the confession that was allegedly made by accused number two actually is. Another thing that Ngome Zulu touched on which was very important he even said when he started the cross um, examination that this will even help accused number two. He then says um, 
you led evidence before this court that the number ending in 0436 um, uh, is registered or recorded under Silo Twala, and the state is the one that told you that this number was actually used by Longwe Twala. If the state hadn't told you, then you wouldn't have known that this number was used by another person. So how this is um, relevant when it comes to accused number two, if you remember, he was arrested on the 16th of June, and it said that his cell phone, um, according to his version, both his cell phones were taken from him however according to the police versions no cell phones were taken for him and there were um, basically calls that were made from his phone so this just comes to prove that even if a phone is re registered to you it does not necessarily mean that the transactions were done by yourself at the time Whilst Mgome Zulu continued with his cross-examination, a short adjournment was requested by the defense counsel for accused number five. And after that short adjournment, Mgome Zulu then says he had completed his cross-examination, which for me, he kind of ended it kind of abruptly. We were still expecting him to continue. But just from what I can make of it, um, the defense counsels for accused three and five um, probably said, you know, your client isn't involved in this, so let us handle those communications with Kelly Kuman or the alleged communications with Kelly Kuman. So Mgome Zulu concluded his cross-examination on Monday and Ramosipili then went into his cross-examination. Ramosipili being the defense counsel for accused number one, number two. What I've picked up about Ramosipili is that he is a person who is really good with technology. He seems to know a lot about technology. So his cross-examination when he commenced basically touched on the procedures, the towers and the sectors on the towers, all those sort, sort of details. He himself also mentioned the issue with the communication between accused number three and um, Kelly Kumalo's phone and Pinky from Vodacom did confirm that there was no communications between the two numbers that are said to be Kelly Kumalo's numbers as well as the number that was linked to accused number three on the day. Very important question that Ramosipili asked on the day is if a person is at Queenswood, would it be possible that his phone would pick up another tower? This is now based on information in 2014, based on the fact that we were in 2014. And the answer from Pinky was that no, um, any calls that this person makes or any calls that they receive would be at their nearest tower. So it would not jump from the tower that they were at and go to the next available tower. It will always pull from the closest tower, which now begs the question, why wasn't Dandy's phone pinging at um, Queenswood and then at some point pinging at Palmer Flats when he was located in one police station. Another question that Ramosipili touched on, which I felt was very, very important, but he seemed to lose his trail of thoughts during asking this question because the judge then butted in as well as Osibanda. But the question was with regards to the Muleleki Tower. Now, um, that place is, um, according to Stain's evidence, was a tower that is closer to the Basutu Hostel. Now, the question that Ramosipili had was, was accused number three's phone ever at the Mulaleki Tower on the 26th of October? And before we could get a response from Pinky, there was a distraction from the judge and a distraction from Sibanda, which made Ramosipili lose his tra train of thought and didn't go back to the question. So we did not end up hearing from Pinky if that was so. Now, Ramisi Billy lastly then touches on the issue of Ndanzi's phone, which was confiscated, um, according to his version, by the police. And um, it was said, there was evidence that was led by um, hosts that said that Ndanzi was active on his phone right until the time that the phone was allegedly confiscated in February. Now, according to Pinky's um, data, it says that this phone was inactive from the 29th of November in 2020, which is surprising because in December, some Somehow, we do have some transactions that are happening on this phone according to um, Hulse's version. So that was one of the questions that were um, raised an eyebrow for me to say, how is it that Hulse told us that were, there were transactions on Danzi's phone and the person from Vodacom is telling us that there was no activity from the 29th of um, November right through to about March in 2021. Ramosipili then completed his cross-examination and it was over to the defense counsel for accused number three, um, Mr. Advocate Mnisi. So Mnisi, when he commenced, um, basically touched on the issues of fraud um, and needed an explanation from Pinky as to how does fraud actually take place in 
in her field basically of cell phone evidence and everything pinky then explained um what constitutes as fraud um in, in cell phone data and everything and nessie then went on to talk about her qualifications and how their systems work the nemo system and how the police are given um access to the front end of this nemo system and pinky reiterates that their data is um, made in PDF form and that it is not manipulate, uh, it cannot be manipulated and also that it cannot be edited in any way when it is still on their system. However, anything that happens after it leaves their system, they cannot answer for. Then Macy also touches on the issue of accused number three's phone ending in 8169, where he says the state went out of its way to prove that accused number three was part of the intruders that allegedly entered the Kumalo residence on the 26th of October 2014 um, at around 7 to half past 7 um, at night. And he then asked, where was accused number three cell phone, according to the Vodacom expert? And she says, at around half past 7 to 8, that cell phone is in Johannesburg, around Holt Street or Moy Street, and it was nowhere near um, the the Fosterous Kumalo home, and that basically removes accused number three from the scene. After having cross-examined Pinky with regards to this information, then Nisi um, basically puts the version of accused number three onto the record and says, according to accused number three, on the 26th in the morning, they took off um, and he was with accused number four they had arranged to go to Sprite. there was a combi that was driven by one of their friends and there were about seven of them in the combi they all went to Katlehong, which is um Sprite, and they had a couple of drinks from there they went to lisedi and um they visited a friend of theirs and then from there they took off and went to johannesburg where they passed at judge go hostel and that is where they saw accused number five who had told them that he had just been back from work and at the time he says that accused number um, five was his friend they then drove off with him to Johannesburg dropped off accused number four and he then went home and he slept that is the version of accused number three with the long adjournment on Tuesday the 23rd of July we then had um, Baloi the state prosecutor arriving in court and letting us know that the arrangement for the ballistic experts needs to be um, they need to basically have a conversation about um, how the ballistic experts are going to meet in order for the defense, uh, um, the defense's uh, ballistic expert to do his own report on the gun and the bullets and everything. So um, we then put Pinky's cross-examination on hold and the arrangement was made with um, Mr. Peterson, who is the ballistic expert for the defense. And it was arranged that he would start working on the bullets and the gun on Monday the 29th and Mangena and Kininda would be um, present when he does all these tests. Um, and another thing, he said that he didn't want to take the gun with him um, on Tuesday and he would prefer if they brought the gun to his labs. The judge then offered um, that they use the state's labs instead and Mr. Peterson, Peterson um, insisted that he would use his own labs and surprisingly enough when Kininda was asked on Tuesday where the gun was he said the gun was in a safe however the gun was apparently in court. Mr. Peterson was then made to put on record what um, items were in the bag and he says it is a gun it's a nine millimeter gun um, as well as some um, bullets and then there's like the test bullets from rule of side there's two of those and um and the test cartridge and also the eight from mangena as well so the proceedings on Tuesday ended with that um, expert having to talk to Omnesi with regards to what will happen on Monday. We should re uh, expect a report from him maybe early September. So that is when we will be able to continue with the cross-examination of the ballistic expert. On Wednesday, the 24th of July, Omnesi continued with his cross-examination. And when I say the state's case collapsed on Wednesday, please believe me because Nisi then goes on to two exhibits that were before the court it's exhibit triple j1 which is pinky's um affidavit as well as um exhibit o2 which was um colonel stain's um 
affidavits now when he goes through these documents there's a realization that there is certain numbers that are not the same so let's get into those details firstly um, when Stain gave his evidence there are two calls in particular that he spoke about on the 2nd of August in 2020, uh, 2014 as well as the 15th of October in 2014 when he says accused number five was in contact with Kelly Kumalo now the surprising thing about this information is that on Pinky's information it says that the number that actually contacted Kelly Kumalo on the 2nd of August is completely different to the number that is reflecting on Colonel Stain's test, uh, testimony or statement as well as on the 15th of October the number is completely different in fact the number that is said to have called Kelly according to Pinky's um, information is actually Senzo Mayua's phone. Now Nisi then asked how is it possible that Stain's information is saying this um, accused number five called and your information is saying these are the two numbers that actually called and she says she cannot answer for that but what does she, what she does know is that the version of Stain's evidence is on an Excel form and Excel can be edited. However, their form is in PDF form which she knows for, for, for certain that it cannot be edited. Nisi then puts it blankly to, to Pinky that that's because the data was manipulated. It was manipulated so that it could be said that accused number five had communication with Kelly Kumalo so that it suits the state's narrative to say that it was a hit indeed that was made on Senzo Mayuwa's life, which is incorrect, which is false, which is fraudulent. He even goes as far as saying the accused has instructed him that he wants to lay a charge of fraud because this information is incorrect the the information was misrepresented in court and um, he now wants to lay charges against maybe the state um, maybe stain because he's the one that led the evidence which is going to be hectic he even went as far as saying pinky should make herself available because they will be calling her back after the realization that the two um, exhibits are not the same and also that the evidence of pinky is not matching with the evidence of holes nisi then completed his cross-examination and it was said that mshololo would continue with cross-examination on thursday the 25th of july on Thursday, the 25th of July, we came to court and expected Umshololo to come with her cross-examination. However, she was unavailable and we were notified that she actually had a case in KZN that she needed to attend to. So the court was postponed to today, which is Friday, the 26th of July. Now, the one thing that Umshololo pressed on is also the issue of the documents that are not the same. One is in PDF, one is in Excel, one is saying this number, one is saying that number. And she really pressed. When I said she mopped the floor with that cross-examination, she really did because she then made Pinky say it onto the record that this information is not the same, this information is not accurate according to Vodacom system. And um, also to say that she was approached by the state or by the advocates as she says and they they realized they realized that the information does not color rate so now it was up to her to go and check from her data why it does not color rate and um Mshololo then asked her when was this information made available to the state because now Mshololo is trying to point out that the state had already realized or noticed that the information that uh, stain had gave, uh, given evidence about did not match vodacom's information they went back to vodacom to try and correct it and pinky had to now come to court and the information is not the same so when did the state know about this and when they did find out about it why is it that they did not notify the court that there has been a mistake in the data Michelle Lolo then continued with her cross-examination where she touches on certain numbers that accused number five denies are his and she then makes Pinky read the records as to the Rika information for these numbers and indeed according to the Rika information none of the numbers that are said to belong to accused number five are picked up on the Vodacom system as numbers that were rika under him but even more important is that there are two numbers that when they read them out to Vodacom, Vodacom says they don't have 
data for that cell phone. So how is it possible that Stain was able to come to the court and tell us that this number belongs to Mtuli because of information they got from Vodacom when Vodacom comes back and says, we don't have any activity on this number? That is a question that I still need um, answered. Anyway, we are currently on lunch and I will continue with the version of accused number five with regards to the 26th of October after the break. After lunch, Advocate Mshalolo then requested the distances from the Basutu Hostel to the said towers that are surrounding the Basutu Hostel or the towers that are in the vicinity of the Basutu Hostel. Now, Pinky does say that Phosphorus, Bopanghoto, Clinics and Moleleki are um, amongst the towers that are actually in the vicinity of uh, Basutu Hostel. However, Mshalolo requires the closest tower. And and this is relevant because um, if you remember, Zungu, who came to testify, had said that he was with all five of the accused on the day of the incident during the day. And if they can, if they can determine the closest tower to the Basutu hostel and that tower does not reflect on accused number three's phone, then it is game over for the state. Um, some of the information Pinky did not have available and Mshololo then requested that she does come with the information on Monday. So I look forward to Monday where Mshololo will be wrapping up her cross-examination and the state has indicated that they will be calling another witness. However, they are unable to tell us who the next witness will be. So we will then continue with the proceedings on Monday. I hope you all have a great weekend. Bye.